What you will hear is a kind of poetry. Many people have written to tell me that the guide lifted them out of our local reality, inspired them, regardless of the logical meaning of the sentences. I hope you will find that hearing these words will be rewarding in the same way. Let go and let it happen. I am a lazy man. Laziness keeps me from believing that enlightenment demands effort, discipline, strict diet, non-smoking, and other evidences of virtue. That's about the worst heresy I could propose, but I have to be honest before I can be reverent. There is an odd chance that this is what someone needs to hear in order to feel better about himself. If you are a kind person and want to know what to expect when enlightenment strikes and why it comes to you, this is for you. These are the rules of the game as I see them. I realize that many of us are opening up very fast these days, and one of the most common delusions we face is the belief that our sense of revelation is unique. The feeling of knowing the truth is not enough. My intention is not to pretend final truth, but to suggest certain simple attitudes that will work for anybody and stay with you in the most extreme crisis, even when your mind is disoriented. These attitudes are so simple that I'm surrounding them with a picture of the universe to show why they work even when you don't believe they will. The universe is so vast and complex that if we needed advice like this to become enlightened, we'd never make it. But on the other hand, the universe is so simple in design that there is no reason for anyone to be puzzled or unhappy. You can control your spiritual existence no matter how complicated it looks. I am talking about what I will want to know someday when I feel trapped in a weird place. Several times when in despair, I've thought, what could I say to someone in this state of mind that would mean anything? That's the kind of testing this information has had. There isn't a line here just because it sounds beautiful. The information is practical and reliable. It has taken me and others safely through some extreme states of mind and can be reduced to a few phrases that are simple enough to recall in any crisis. I'll begin with a briefly stated idea about how the universe is made, then discuss our lives from that viewpoint. It is a far-reaching idea extending into every field of knowledge, and since it took me many years to get it straight, I cannot expect that anyone else should casually accept it. All I can do is ask that you play the idea game see where it leads and check it against what you know. What has to be true for the universe to look to us as it does? Is there a credible bridge between matter and spirit? Like many people, I wrestled with such concerns for years and what follows are some of my conclusions. Perhaps these conclusions will be meaningful to you only if you follow your own process of checking and proving. If so, the first section contains all you will need to keep you busy for a long time. On the other hand, if all you want is a do-it-yourself guide to psychic levels, you'll find that too. I am really not expecting anyone to take these sentences and expand them again into a feeling of realization. But if one of you, whom I never hear about, gets a little higher and happier, then I would say all this a thousand times over. I hope you find the vibrations pleasant. We are equal beings, and the universe is our relations with each other. The universe is made of one kind of entity. Each one is alive. Each determines the course of its own existence. That is really all you need to know to understand what I have to say. Everything I am saying has its roots in that first paragraph, and it is possible to resolve any question by going back to it and thinking it through for yourself. The universe is made of one kind of whatever it is which cannot be defined. For our purpose, it isn't necessary to try to define it. All we need to do is assume that there is only one kind of whatever it is and see if it leads to a reasonable explanation for the world as we know it. The basic function of each being is expanding and contracting. Expanded beings are permeative. Contracted beings are dense and impermeative. Therefore, each of us, alone or in combination, may appear as space, energy, or mass, depending on the ratio of expansion to contraction chosen. 
and what kind of vibrations each of us expresses by alternating expansion and contraction. Each being controls its own vibrations. A completely expanded being is space. Since expansion is permeative, we can be in the same space with one or more other expanded beings. In fact, it is possible for all the entities in the universe to be one space. We experience expansion as awareness, comprehension, understanding, or whatever we wish to call it. When we are completely expanded, we have a feeling of total awareness of being one with all life. At that level, we have no resistance to any vibrations or interactions of other beings. It is timeless bliss with unlimited choice of richly felt concepts. Space is a level of experience that any of us can reach, but it is difficult to talk about on our present plane precisely because it is unlimited. When a being is totally contracted, it is a mass particle, completely imploded. To the degree that it is contracted, a being is unable to be in the same space with others. It is unconscious and has a host of dim feelings. Of course, these are just the feelings appropriate to mass vibration levels, and it can get out of them at any time by expanding in consciousness. When a being is alternating expansion and contraction, it is energy. My guess is that at the middle point, 50% expansion and 50% contraction, a being would be logical, non-subjective, egoless, and predictable. It is important to note that energy is not a quantity of anything objective. Energy, like space and matter, is what a lot of live beings are doing. Energy beings react to their neighbors in a way that is often predictable and apparently automatic, like falling dominoes. While relating to space beings, energy beings will appear to be high with a sense of increasing subjective freedom. Oriented to mass beings, they will be low energy, vibrating more slowly with a growing feeling of subjective compulsion and disorder. When relations between energy entities are not synchronized, the entities feel pain. The universe is an infinite harmony of beings and an elaborate range of expansion-contraction ratios, frequency modulations, and so forth. There is a particular set of feelings that goes with every variation, every combination, every steady state or vibration level. There is also a different perception of how other beings are relating from every different viewpoint. The thought of these possibilities is so staggering Trying to contain them in words is so ridiculous that it is hard for me to go further. However, what we are after is to isolate some basic attitudes that will recover awareness of our freedom to move around in this maze or go straight to the top. We are equal beings and the universe is our relations with each other. What am I doing on a level of consciousness where this is real? No resistance. Love it the way it is. Love as much as you can from wherever you are. All states of consciousness are available right now. It's always within us to relate this way. Enlightenment doesn't care how you get there. Whatever you are doing, love yourself for doing it.
There is nothing you need to do first in order to be enlightened. This too can be experienced with a completely expanded awareness. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for letting my consciousness be in this place.